So what I've done here is I've got a, um, a sea container that's fitted out uh, with everything that I need for an alfresco. Um, it's away from the house. It's when people come over, you can do whatever you like. Everything in here runs off grid. And you don't particularly have to have huge inverters or large batteries and all those types of things if you know what you're doing as far as the draw. So what I've got here is a little bit of a setup. You would have seen the lights as we came in here. They're all running off a, uh, a Nomad L105, which is the same prismatic uh, setup as the V6 here. Um, and that's over here. And that's actually running a 480 watt solar panel on the roof. And that's a gable roof. That's enough to put in pretty much a good 20 amp consistently throughout the day. And I'm probably going to get five good hours at 20 amp hour. Um, so I could run happily, which I've got down here. You would have seen the hole cut in the side, which I've got a sliding fridge in and out of the side of the sea container. Um, I can run another fridge off that. So that's 50, uh, 52 and I run a 95 at the same time. I could run that off. You can see in the back here. Um, I've got the regulator off the, um, from, from the solar panels down here, 20 amp. And then I'm running a number of Y leads coming out of here. Um, I've also got a 600 watt inverter. Now, I can swap that out for a 1500 watt inverter if I want to, but I have to remember that the 105 L series has a maximum of 50 amp output at any given time. The V6 has a maximum of 100 amp output at any given time. But I'm running, as you can see here, I've got a, uh, a TV here, which is a, an LCD TV, and I'm going to run that off the, uh, <coughs> the inverter. And if I run it off the inverter, like so. So I've run this off the inverter. Um, this is only going to draw probably two and a half, maybe three amp. And then I've got the fridge plugged in, which draws about four or five when it fires up. Um, but typically it draws about one amp an hour on average. So through the night, it's going to be sitting at, you know, one degree or whatever. Uh, and then I've got all the lights running off of here. It's about 14, 15 lights running off this. Um, and then what else have I got? And then obviously the exterior lighting. So I might actually run some more things off it because I've got plenty at 50 amp, two or three fridges, no problem. Just run a number of multiple wire leads out of here. Like I've got here, uh, running fridges and lighting off these wire leads etc and i'm still only drawing at the moment 5.4 amp and it's night time so i could quite have to leave all this stuff on uh, all night if i wanted to and then um you know this got to hook up to my antenna and i've also got an antenna booster which hooks up to this as well my f bus and so on so if you're running an alfresco like this you don't necessarily have a massive battery bank it's all about putting the right amount of power back into the unit so if i top this up every day which i can tell you at the moment i put this in half full today it's still at about, uh, what do we got here? I could use the phone, but it's obviously, I'm, I'm recording with this, but it's 56.8% at the moment. Uh, in the morning, it's probably going to be around about 20 odd percent. Um, but by lunchtime, it'll be full again. So I'm not really going to be too worried about it. Um, the lights will be off, etc. I won't turn the lights off tonight. I'll just leave them on. Um, nothing really to worry about. I'm quite happy to cycle them. And the other thing I could do is with the inverter, uh, that's a 600 watt, and it's only pulling a couple of amps. So that's going to be quite happily doing whatever I need. I could put another TV on if I wanted to. And I could also run one of these air cons, which I've got here. That's a 1224. The 1224 with the adapter, which plugs into 240, I could plug it into that one as well. And that will draw about 300 watt. So I still have enough there to be able to run with 50 amp here to run pretty much everything I want to do. The thing is, I actually know what I'm using and how much draw it takes. As long as you know that, then you're never gonna run into trouble. If you want to have a 1500 watt inverter or 2000 watt inverter, that's fine. But you can't use all that on, a, say, a 50 amp output. You can use only the 50 amps. So you can still put the inverter in, but if it's not running anything, it's fine. So with the 105 V6, you can run up to 100 amp um, output at any given time, to 200 amp hour. So this is the 105, but the 200 amp hour, you can run 200 amp hour constant. This one here at 100 amp hour constant, you can run a 1500 watt inverter. You can use close to 1500 watt, but not quite. So I would stick around the 1200 watt mark. So running a, a microwave, which I've got down the other run there, um, and that one's a 700 watt inverter. I would run that off my 1500, uh, sorry, 700 watt is the microwave, but I could run that off a 1500 watt inverter, no problem. You always like to give a little bit of a buffer at the end. Never run inverters dead flat out. So if you've got a 1500 inverter, don't run 1500 watts out of it because it will burn out. Um, and that's the reason we've got them external here, because if someone comes in here and doesn't really know what they're doing, they plug something in, um, especially you get someone who decides to plug their hair dryers in and all the rest of it, and they've already got a full load on, um, you might burn out the inverter 
but at least it's not part of the actual battery unit and you've still got a battery unit and you can still use that and you're not stuck without any power. So that's a pretty much an Afresco setup or an off-grid setup, a small home setup. So if you're going to be running LCD LED TVs, that's obviously about 30 odd 32 inch TV. Um, I can run a 42 inch LCD, no problems at all. Um, even got a large one that you can run off that. Just remember that, look at the draw, look at the wattage, look at your accessories and find out what they're drawing and then stay with limitations and you won't have any problems. So again, that was just touching on using these as, as an Alfresco or a true off-grid system. You don't have to have a massive, massive battery bank to run an off-grid. Um, I do use plasma guns and things like that up here at the farm. I do use these to run my uh, irrigation uh, off my uh, IBCs. And that runs my irrigation at about 800 litres an hour, and they're all 12 volt pumps. But if I want to pull out a plasma gun and cut a hole in a seed container, obviously I'm going to run the three phase or a, 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 and, and that sort of thing, which is um, I've got that hooked up to the house. But I could always run a, uh, um, a generator if I wanted to run those types of things there. And even in here, I, ha I could have a teppanyaki bar like I've got here. Uh, this one here is running on gas as opposed to running on electricity. Um, you could have uh, an induction if you wanted to in, in here anyway. So a lot you can do, but just understand the draws are everything you put onto your um, uh, your off-grid system and that you shouldn't run into trouble. If you want to uh, figure out something to do at your own um, Alfresco uh, setup and you're not really sure what you're doing, by, by all means, email us at contact at nomadpdu.com.au. Um, we could draw your mud map as to how to set things up um, and just keep things simple. So again, um, we will talk again soon. Um, but any questions, just come back and send us an email. Thanks again, and uh, see you soon.